This study that was published in the proceeds of the National Academy of Sciences titled Brighter Nights and Darker Days Predict Higher Mortality Risk. This was a Texas study that looked at 88,000 individuals, UK Biobank, but they were not looking at satellite data. They were actually wearing a device that was measuring light at all hours of the day. Uh, this was about 88,000, 89,000. They followed them for eight years. This is amazing what they found. So they looked at Model 1 and uh, let me see here. Yeah, Model 1 where they looked at the time of day here on the x-axis. So 16, that's about four o'clock in the afternoon to four o'clock in the afternoon. And they asked this question, compared to people who get 50th percentile of light exposure and less, what would happen to mortality for people that were in the 50th to 70th percentile? That's here in blue at the bottom. People in the 70th to 90th percentile, that's in purple here in the middle. And people who got the highest amounts of light, 90th to 100 percentile, and that's here in red. Notice, first of all, what happens. As we go from 50th to 70th, 70th to 90th, and 90th to 100, do you notice what happens? The amplitude of this effect gets bigger and bigger. What does that suggest? Dose response curve. Again, it implies causation in the uh, Bradford Hill criteria. Okay, what else do you notice? Notice that sunlight at all hours of the day reduces mortality except for from about midnight to about seven o'clock in the morning. So having bright light from midnight to about seven o'clock in the morning is not a good thing. In fact, this thing stops to become beneficial at around nine o'clock at night. And you can see that works in all cause mortality, cardiometabolic activity, and other cause mortality. Same sort of situation. We're seeing that light during the day is beneficial. Light at night is not beneficial. Okay. And this is the uh, findings. They said these findings demonstrate the importance of maintaining a dark environment across late night and early morning hours when the central circadian pacemaker is most sensitive to light and seeking bright light during the day to enhance circadian rhythms. Protection of lighting environments may be especially important in those at risk for both circadian disruption and mortality, such as in intensive care units or aged care settings. Across the general population, avoiding night light and seeking daylight may lead to a reduction in disease burden, especially cardiometabolic diseases, and may increase longevity. Michael, this is exactly the same diseases that we're talking about at the beginning when we're talking about the mitochondrion. We're actually connecting these dots. Let's connect it even more. We said that trees and grass and leaves, highly reflective of infrared light. What do we see when people go out into these spaces? We have known for decades that people who live in green spaces have better outcomes. Notice this, 28% reduction in diabetes type 2, 16% reduction in cardiovascular mortality, 31% reduction in total mortality. And uh, you know, people say, well, look, hey, these people who live in green spaces, they have more money, they have more status, they can exercise more. This is the reason why they have better mortality. Well, I got a, I got a, um, I got a, a study for you. South Louisville, Kentucky, four square mile area, they measured CRP levels, which is a surrogate for cardiovascular disease. And then they went and planted 8,000 trees, mature trees with leaves already on them. That's all they did. They just planted trees. Now, according to what we've talked about today, that would improve and increase infrared light, especially when you go outside. That should have beneficial effects just by itself without exercising. Obviously, we didn't inject money into their bank accounts. We didn't do anything else. We just planted the trees. And then two to three years later, we measured CRP levels again. There was a mind-blowing reduction of CRP in, that po in the same population by 13%. That may not sound like a lot, but that's about the equivalent that you would get with uh, exercise, regular exercise three times a week. So that's mind blowing. What did this study of meta-analysis of everybody who gets outside into green spaces find? Well, let me tell you what they found. They said that we found that spending time in or living close to natural green spaces is associated with diverse and significant health benefits. It reduces the risk of, now listen to these diseases, see if they sound familiar, type two diabetes, cardiovascular disease, premature death, preterm birth, and increases sleep duration. People living closer to nature also had reduced diastolic blood pressure, heart rate, and stress. In fact, one of the really interesting things that we found is that exposure to green space significantly reduces people's levels of salivary cortisol, a physiological marker of stress.